Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Hey, everybody, welcome to a uh, kooky, spooky post Halloween Tuesdays with Stories. I hope you're covered in uh, jizz and the shit on your mustache because Halloween just passed, and uh, ah. for us, it hasn't come yet at now. It's always Either weird to me. The weird, uh, you and we're talking pre, it's pre Halloween for you and I. But for them, yes. it's post-Halloween. Isn't that weird? Yes, yeah, somebody might have get got shot, died, killed themselves, fell off a building, uh, you know, eat, eat an apple with a razor blade. All kind of things could have happened. By the time they hear this, we could both be dead. That's true. Or if Shelby dies, they won't even be hearing this. It'll just, this will just be gone. We don't know what we're doing. Yes, yeah, Shelby. Man, we're, we're, we've got to be his immediate family. I mean, there can't be other Shelbys out there. <laughs> Is it, I can't imagine a Shelby father with a cardigan and a mom knitting. It's got to be just us. What would we do? If he died, what would we do with this information? I don't even know how to... Like, there's got to be somebody that knows how to do it. Maybe we could put on VHS. I don't know. I'm clueless. <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do. So, yeah, Shelbo, we need you. Keep keep combing that hair and wearing all black and doing your weird stuff because uh, <laughs> we need you out there, Fatty. I mean, it's kind of like I read um, Stephen King's On Writing, that book. I read some of it. I thought it was whatever, but... People rave. People rave. I, I, once again, I'm like, what? what's going on here? <laughs> it was good. It was cool. It was neat. Whatever the fuck. But oh um, we got a Sopranos moment. Everybody else loved it. I mean, I liked it. I liked it. Don't get me wrong. You know, it's fine. But there was some interesting stuff that stuck in my ass. But one thing he talked about is how book writing is, um, what's that shit where you read someone's mind? Telekinesis. Yes. I think that's wow. the word he used. He's like, this is telekinesis, Canadian Leeson. Yeah. And, um, I think it's a black chick I know. Because he, he talked about the same thing. Like He's like, I'm sitting at my desk right now. It's October of whatever, 2015, and you're on an airplane in you know the west indies in 2018 and my thoughts are my thoughts now are in your head then kooky like we're in the future right now we're in someone's future brain yeah yeah it's great it's like the uh the what do you call those uh that you dig up bones time capsule ah yes time capsule you know it's like you're watching Saved by the Bell, and they, the guy pulls up a time capsule like, whoa, it's my comic book collection or my baseball card from 1951. This is my prized possession. Now you don't even think about it. So time changes all. It heals all wounds. How about Time's this? Time's on my side. I participated in a time capsule this year. Come on. Swear to God. What? Where is it? It's in my father's backyard, I guess. My if they have my I have a niece and a nephew, and they wanted to do a time capsule, and I think the whole thing's kooky. And and along these lines of what we're talking about, I'm like, when do we open this? Because my parents are in their 60s, their blood pressure's higher than the you know stock market, so <laughs> I, I, or that's low maybe. I don't know. I was just trying I to think of things with spikes. I think it's the check the Dow, Shelbo. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever it is, I mean, I'm like, Corona. we're gonna open this. We better open this thing in six months because these two drink like like the meteors coming. So yeah, but what'd uh, you put in? Can I ask? Did you put a dildo in there or a bag of cheese? What's in there? Well, it's a lot of pressure because here's the thing with these um, time capsules is that you're supposed to put something in there meaningful. But if it's meaningful, yes. I want it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like so, I didn't know what to put in there. So I I took a. We were at, uh, Sarah and I were at Colin Quinn's wedding, big name drop there, and they had one of those photo booth things, and they print out a thing It says Colin and Jen, and we put on silly hats, and we got two copies of it, so we kept one. I took that photo, so it's kind of a time capsule of what we looked like, and I wrote a thing on the back. I wrote, ah. hey, I hope everyone's doing well right now. I'm living here, and yeah. yada, yada. And I had to, by the way, put in parentheses, these aren't our hats. These are joke hats. 
Because <laughs> you don't want 10 years from now going, boy, Joe and Sarah were hipster doofuses. Right, right. That's true. But I'll tell you, I have once found a cigar box full of old trinkets I collected when I was like a, like a special needs downsy kid. <laughs> and, you know, action figure, arrowhead, uh, a marker I liked, a baseball card, a condom, whatever it was. And I found it 10 years later. So I found it when I was like 16. And it blew my mind because those that, you know, Batman was in there and it was the old Batman. And he had the old cape and he was remember when Batman was light gray and blue. Yes. The light gray. Yeah, it was that one. So it really meant the world. I thought that was the coolest toy. The arrowhead. I probably made that in Cub Scouts before I got diddled. And then, you know, uh, a comic book that I wrote was in there. Cloth Man and Fabric Boy. Wow. And uh yeah, and I just saw it later. I was like, oh, my God, it blows your mind because this was all meaningful, and now it's just trash. Let me ask you this about the Batman. What kind of cape? I'm going to throw three options at you on the all cape. Right. Don't tell me. All right. Was it the, the stiff rubber cape that just folds around and spoons them? I love one. that one. I know that one. I know exactly what you're talking about, Fatty. <laughs> was it that one or the fabric one? There was the fabric that you could whoosh in the wind. And then there was like a leather one, like a leathery, similar to the oh. fabric, but not soft, but kind of leathery, but more flappy, flappable. It was the old fabric where it clinched at the neck. The neck had a little wire in it, and it was yep. those were my favorite because it was the, the it was the cutest. I know the neck clinch, <laughs> the Vulcan <laughs> neck pinch, but yeah, the, uh, the 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 plastic with the wrap around, I, I didn't care for. It felt too fa- phony. Yeah, I, I always liked the neck clinch because you could pop it off, and I thought Batman or Luke Sky, Jedi Skywalker minus the cape was fun. I liked the no cape. Ah, not all heroes wear them. I hear you. I hear you. I liked it because you could pop it off, and I was such a cum guzzling queef that like I would stand my Batman up and hit him with a fan so that thing would blow. Yep. And how about this? You ever take the the cape with the neck clink? Put it on the finger and draw a little face on the uh, finger. Come around with the cape. I mean, did I? I did. I made a little clan member out of my finger once. <laughs> when I put a little hat on it, a little dunce cap. I had a white cape. It was a it was a hell of a meeting. <laughs> I think what, what's going on with the clan, by the way. You hear things and then you don't hear things. It doesn't seem like they're they're doing that great, right? No. I think they're dwindling, but it, the irony is all these uh, weirdos, these politicians, they're giving them all this p- this, pl- this press. It's like, hey, the Klan's out there. Watch out for the Klan. We're white supremacists. And you're like, they're done. The Klan is out. You're the one pumping them. Klan stinks. They're out. No one likes the Klan. Klan's but in the out. old days, you see these old footage, even the 60s, I mean, they were walking around. They were at oh. diners and shit. You see them I with know. the thing pulled back, and they're eating an omelet. Crazy to think about. And also... Uh oh shit! I had something on the clan. Oh, you know what's gotta be the worst part about the clan? Because I think about them a lot. Is they have meetings? That's all they. T- you ever had a day job? All you uh, every time you have a meeting, you go ah, oh, we got a meeting. Gah! and they and do is, that all the time. And is the clan doing clan things via Zoom? Are they having Zoom Ooh, clan meetings now? That's that's a great question. There, grand the wizard Wi-Fi's, Zoom. <laughs> yeah, the Wi-Fi is all fucked up. They can't, you know, <laughs> blacks. You know what else is interesting about uh, very racist, you know, areas like that are known to be racist? A uh, lot of black porn. Oh, interesting. They do these studies where they can show you what kind of genre, like Texans love stepsis and Mississippi loves uh, pegging or, or cuckolding. All the interracial black stuff is all in the like the racial, like woodsy, methed out white areas. Wow, that makes sense, I guess. I, I think that, I can it, see that. It's an overcompensation, you know? Like, uh, if you got too much of this, I want to see a little of that. Right, right. Yeah, they're probably all a little bit into that. Well, that's the most dangerous thing to them. Taboo. Right, right. Yes. Interesting. When, now, oh, wait, yeah, taboo's you, are big. You, are you a Halloween guy? What's your Halloween vibe? Are you working? Do you go to a party? Do you trick and treat? Do you steal a kid? Wait, what's going on over there? That's a good question. I like I like Halloween. I love New York and Halloween. The whole week of Halloween in New York used to be before this uh, whole miscarriage of a of a pandemic. But it used to be you know hot chicks with the skimpy cat outfit and then like the 
the buff guy wearing a diaper. He's a baby. We get it. You're ripped. You know, and uh, it was all, all these parties, and you see him on the subway. You got the subway. There's the Joker over on one side, and there's Batman on the other side, and they go, ah, and everybody's having a great time. Now, don't you find it a little spooky? Hey, a couple things. I, I assume, well, you probably do work on Halloween because most people don't want to work Halloween. It's the worst right. night of comedy of the year. Are you working out there on Halloween? I am. I'm at Atlantic City this Halloween, which is the weirdest joint. Emilio, the guy who booking it, texted me. He said, these are the worst numbers we've ever had, period. That's it? That's it for AC because think about it. It's Halloween. Nobody wants to go to a casino on Halloween. I mean, you got to be a real sad sack of Jewia. And so it's Halloween, it's a pandem, and it's, you know, me. So nobody's coming out. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, I guess the people that do come on your back, they're diehards. I guess, yeah. I mean, they're giving up a, a bobbin for apples or a Halloween party just to see my, my fat ass. So God love you. I appreciated all the people who came out, but I... I think it's going to be a bunch of old fogies and, like, MAGA hats and shit and, like, rascals. Can I just say this? Just a side note. Bobbing for apples seems like the single worst, dumbest activity ever. Yeah. I, I, I mean, my, my mouth was too small. My jaw's not strong enough. My teeth are crooked. I don't like apples. Like, you can drown. I mean, what's going on there? Is anyone doing that enjoyably? I don't think so. I think the whole beauty of it is when the guy goes d to dunk his head, you hold it under go, ah, look at this fucking chooch. I'm drowning him. Yeah, I don't know how you do it. I'd rather Bob for cum. I, it's just, <laughs> I don't get it. Like the, 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 the apple goes down. That's a great porn star. You know Bob for cum? He's good. He's a, he's a pro, that guy. He can take a load and keep on going. Now there's a t-shirt. Someone needs to draw up Bob for cum. You know, it's a guy in the... <laughs> I mean, I don't know what happens there, but... Ooh, by the way, it's 10.30 at night over here. I, I did two sets. I got a whiskey clinkling. I love well, that this sound. Is, this is weird. <coughs> I'm in Seattle, so it's 7.30. The time thing is is goofy. I mean, to me, it's <laughs> it's weird because I'm still on like East Coast time mentally, so it's it feels late at night. I've been getting up at 6 a.m., yeah. But it's 7.30 p.m., so I'm going to be done with this. I have a spot after this, a Zoom show. Wow. That's so, weird. It's, it's, three, it's strange. Sorry, go ahead. Three hours is, is, we act like, oh, it's L.A., it's New York. Three hours is a huge difference in time. Like, that's noon to three or five to eight or seven to ten. Those are wildly different worlds. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm watching Jeopardy over here, and you got your nightcap on. I'm drinking a nightcap. I got pajama bottoms going. This feels odd. It feels like like Playboy after dark over here. Well, you want to talk about weird. I mean, so, I, by the way, I have nothing for this episode, so we're going to have to really bob for cum here. Yeah, I'm bobbing. Um, so I'm in Seattle. Right now I'm in downtown Seattle. I'm staying in West Seattle, which, which diehards of, of the program know is my home away from home. That's where Derek's been for years. It's, I mean... West Seattle. I mean, this is a town I, I can drive around with no, no maps. That's exciting. Wow. That's impressive. When you impressive. have a, a non-living city that you're like, you, I'm taking shortcuts and shit. I know what I'm doing over here. Damn. That's, I, I, have you been there that much? Well, 2010, I did the Seattle Comedy Fest, so I spent three weeks there, three uh -huh. full, 21 days living there, and then I probably go two weeks out of the year. That was 2010, so that for 10 years, two weeks out of the year, we're talking... 10, 20, that's 20 weeks times the other three weeks. I've probably spent about 24 weeks. That's four months. So think about moving to a town for four months. You kind of, you uh, know, the lay of the land. Good point. That makes sense. So a lot of time here. But right now I'm in downtown Seattle at the Hyatt Regency on the 41st floor. <whistles> you know me. I like to spring. Yeah, you spring and you go, you go big in the, what do they call it? You go hard in the ass. And uh, you, you, you like a high floor. I keep it low. I'm a Jerry Springer. If I was here for the week, maybe low, because the elevator ride, I got to tell you, is a cunt. I mean, I'm in there for uh, half an hour. My ears are popping. Hate I, it. I don't know what's going on in the elevator. I, I've passed out on one of the elevator rides. I will say Mohegan Sun, it's a shit box of a casino. It's in the middle of hell on Gunquin, Maine, or Tennessee, or Connecticut, <laughs> wherever it is. That elevator at, at, at that place in the Sky Tower, unreal. I, I, I made a point to bring it up to like five. I love a good elevator. 
Wait, how, how do you know Ogunquit? I've heard of it. It's a funny name. Oh, yeah. It's the gay town in Maine. Oh, that's how I know it. Yeah, but, that's why uh, I was yeah. curious. <laughs> I hear a funny I name. And I, uh, I, I am now, but uh, I'm more of a uh, province town cat. But if I hear a funny name, I uh, put it right in the vault for later because you never know. You know, Albuquerque's in there and uh, Unkinsville and Normal, Illinois. Ironically, Unkinsville is where in the hotel is that you're talking about. <laughs> Oh, there you go. There you go. But yeah, I love um, a funny name. Oh, Gunkwit's a fun gay name because it sounds like a sex thing. Uh, it does. And what is it? Uh, Fanna Bunkport, Maine? Kitty Kenny Bunk- Bunkport. That's where the bushes live. That's another great name. Yeah. that's. I, we used to go up to all these places when I was a kid, when I was a young whippersnapper. Was that, that's New England? <laughs> that's all New England, yep. Yes. Uh, it was fun because I remember no. going... When I was really young, George H.W. Bush, he lived in um, Kenny Bunk, Kenny Bunk Port. And uh-huh. my parents drove me up there and they were like, we were looking from a distance, like, that's the president's house. And it was confusing because wow. I was like, I thought he lives in D.C. And they're like, well, this is his other house. And I was like, two houses? What is this? Right. That's a whole Very, thing as a kid. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. I remember I went to New Mexico as a kid once and they were like, there's a roadrunner. And I, I missed it. But all I could picture was Meep Meep. I had the same thing. We just... By the way, the Roadrunner is a direct, I know, I guess all birds are, whatever, but d- Roadrunner, direct descendant of the dinosaurs, which someone said all birds are, whatever the fuck, bird life matters. But Very I was, uh, we just had the same conversation when we were in Texas. There's nothing more disappointing than a Roadrunner. You see, it's a little piece of shit. It looks like a pigeon. Oh, really? It's not a meep meep, though. It it's doesn't have a, the leg, the stick blue, legs. It's not blue, it's not big, it's not fat. It's a little piece of shit with the feather and the little leg. It just runs. Oh. It's tiny. That's a bummer. I was hoping it was, you know, had a puff of smoke behind it and a, uh, a coyote chasing it. Nothing, huh? No, it's more of a trot, too. It does like a... Ah, you see these cartoons? It's almost like movies. You know when you see a movie and you're like, oh, jeez, that was terrifying. You know, you see a movie and it's like, oh, that's what uh, that guy looks like. You know, that because he's representing Carl Young or whoever the fuck in Blow. And then you see the end of the movie and you're like, go! Oh, they show the real guy. You fucking you, you want to stab your eyes with a number two pencil. The 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 biggest disparity ever is the movie Argo, <laughs> which is a decent flick, but it's Ben Affleck. They show the guy. I mean, my God, the guy's four nine, two forty, <laughs> Latino. I mean, he's missing teeth, Woo. and it's he's perfectly Louis, Louis Guzman. Is that the guy? Oh name? yeah, dead on. I mean, it's it's that guy and Affleck who I love. Was just like, hey, fuck you, I'm playing, I need to come back. But that's the thing is, Guzman, he's fun, but can he carry a picture? Yeah, he's not selling tickets, he's not putting butts in the seats. No, no, not old Guzzy. No, Guz stinks. Character I never, actor. I never cared for Guz, by the way, he's fine, he's whatever, but... People love Guz, he's in Boogie Nights, he's in some big ones. Boogie Nights and uh, Magnolia, too. Ah, uh, PTA probably likes the the goose. Yeah, so uh, I guess I like him. He's fine, whatever. <clears throat> <clears throat> anyway, so we're over there in West Seattle at Derek's house having a great time because the kids are that in a sweet spot of an age, eight and four. So they're funny. You can have a conversation. They're a lot of fun. We're having a good time over there. But we fucked up. Sarah and I were here for a week, which is a long time, a full week. That's long. And I got to do the podcast. We got to do the bonus episode. I got to do a Zoom show. I got to do another Zoom. And she's got a, a, a web show, a live web show, a podcast, another podcast, her bonuses. Yesterday, Derek's working from home. His daughter's Ooh. going to school at home. So Ugh. we got four home Zoom things going. Yesterday, Wi Fi shits the bed. Oh! Just goes out, not even like shoddy, just completely gone, no signal, zero, zilch. Wow. So we were all fucked. We had to cancel everything, drop everything, the whole thing. The kid is a retard now. She can't read because Zoom is broken. Yep. And, uh, you know, he got fired. He's homeless. And we had to get the hotel to get Wi-Fi. But you go to these shitty hotels, they have mediocre. So I went Hyatt Regency. And requested a high floor. So we came over here, 41st floor, and the place is a ghost town. It's a it's a Thursday night. Nobody's here. We got the place to ourselves. It's pretty sweet. 
Wait a minute. Did you get this place for the Wi-Fi or for the Wi-Fi and to have a hotel? We got it basically just for the Wi-Fi. I mean, I'm, don't get me wrong. I'm going to try to have some intercourse over here because we're, uh, we're sleeping it. on an inflatable child bed over here. Yeah. It's not exactly a turn on because any minute you can hear that door creaking. Like, can not get my panties? You know, and I'm uh, wearing them. So, well, now I'm hard. But <laughs> yeah, that is tough. Plus, the, the, I mean, the hotel. It's. I mean, how? I mean, Derek must have felt horrible about the Wi-Fi. Another worse than being the host and the Wi-Fi goes out. He's like, I'm so sorry. I know, and then he's clicking it off and on, and I'm telling him to call the lady, and you could tell it was got tense over there. I mean, yeah. Plus, everybody's got their thing. So we got one night over here in the thing. We got the high floor. But I got to tell you this, and uh, you've probably heard the rumors, downtown Seattle right now, yikes. Really? Are we talking protest? Or are we talking burnt out? It's just, whole, first Hobo. of all, we're downtown, and Seattle always has a crazy homeless problem. One of the worst homeless cities, whatever, however you say it. Yep. And I walked down the street. I was like, let me go check out Pike Place because Sarah had her business. So I go down the street, and first of all, everything closes at 5 p.m. The whole Pike Place market, 5 p.m., they flip the close sign, and then half the stuff's not even there. I mean, you've been to Pike Place. I mean, it's packed, shoulder yeah. to shoulder, wild. The fish people, they're not there. Yeah. There's nothing. It's just Whoa. chain link fence over there. What? It feels like a, a, what do you call it, a fucking... Um, apocalyptic? Yes, exactly. Boy, you're on tonight. Thank you. It's wow. apocalyptic, and there's just bums, homeless. There's no uh, no nothing, no tourists, no security, no police, just all the crazy homeless people, no shops open, and it's pretty harrowing. I mean, the sun started to go down. I was I was running like a zombie flick. Holy moly, that's wild. Uh because I always hear that town, it's it's too busy now because of Amazon. Everybody hates the Amazon. They came in. They raped my dad. They fucked up the whole thing. The traffic's bad. All the jobs are fucked, whatever it is. But you're saying it's a ghost town. Well, I mean, at 5 p.m. anyways, I'm sure maybe people are working. But I think everyone's working from home. It's a tech city, the tech boom. And it's like Times Square. I mean, I'm sure there's some part. Amazon's not... a downtown i don't think or maybe they no. are i think they might be in uh i don't know hell's kitchen whatever the fuck it's called yeah but um downtown five o'clock i mean everything closed i went to beecher's to get the mac and cheese and they literally flipped the sign right in my face i was ah. gonna walk in i was like up oh, never mind wow and the original I starbucks there usually it's a line out the door there was like two asian ladies in there going, going oh, whatever they were saying <laughs> No I gotta offense. say, I hate to say it, I'm, I'm a selfish twat, but uh, I feel better. I mean, New York's falling apart, the paint's coming off the walls, the rats are taking over, the hobos are eating me out, but if you say other cities are queefing too, I feel better. Yeah, well, I mean, West Seattle's normal, it's fine. I mean, you're, we're walking around over there, I got the mask on, I went to Easy Street Records, we have breakfast, I buy a couple records, I, I'm... People keep saying, like, we're losing a year or this or that, but I'm like, there's still people that are COVID crazy. I'm like, throw a mask on, go shopping. And it's kind of nice because they're like four people at a time. I'm like, that's great. Yeah. There's nobody else in there. I got the place to myself, and, uh, you know, you can still shop. You can still go out. I'm hiking in the woods. I'm not wearing a mask. I'm hiking all over the fucking place. Yeah. So live your lives, folks. Get out there. Hey, I completely agree. I've, this is the best time for air travel. The airport's empty. There's no security. The airplane is empty. I'm getting bumped up to first class everywhere I go. I'm fucking stewardess. It's great. So there are perks. Yeah, we got, by the way, uh, I got the uh, Delta One upgrade. Ooh. Cross country. We're walking. This is the most perfect entry. Sarah and I go to JFK early in the morning. Tons of traffic still. I don't know where everyone is going. Mm -hmm. Yep. We get to the airport, we walk in, we get our snacks, and we're like, oh shit, we better get there, it's time. So we walk all the way down the terminal, JFK is empty, apocalyptic, I mean, nobody at JFK Terminal 4, we walk Love right it. up to our gate, they go, uh, all boarding, Delta 1, passengers only, first class. I look at the board, <whistles> upgrade, J-list, S. Talamash, so we just walked in, never even broke stride, straight on, Delta 1. Rocked back in the bed, went to sleep, jerked Both off. of you? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Always awkward when one of you gets it. No, we got it. Both got it. So 
pretty beautiful. And then every day has been beautiful. West Seattle, we're having a great time. We're hiking. We're playing with the kids. Great time. But downtown, I mean, oof, it's, it's, it's scary, man. All right. Well, everybody's been trashing New York. Oh, New York's fucking falling apart. It's never coming back. It's dead. It's not what it used to be. Blah, blah, blah. But it, it sounds like uh, a lot of cities are going through hell. Yeah. And when I say live your life, be safe. Yeah. Wear the mask, distance when you can. Well, you know what I mean. Don't go crazy. Don't go coughing on everybody. Don't go to a rock concert. But hey, you can go to a bar. I just ate at the Cheesecake Factory by myself like a sad bastard. But yeah. there's no one around. We're eating inside. It's no sweat. Love it. Love eating inside. It's the best feeling. I mean, that's how that's how low my standards have gotten. I walked through. I was walking through Brooklyn tonight. I see a p- people eating inside of a restaurant. I was like, yeah, it looks so beautiful. The light's hitting them. They got a candle going. They're eating sushi. It was great. Yeah, it was pretty nice. I mean, I sat at the cheesecake, got a to-go order for Sarah. The uh, you know, I'm the only one in there, literally. I mean, it's pretty yeah. pretty sweet. I, mean, I say it every time. 7-Eleven is Disneyland now. I mean, I, I'm going to this casino. I'm, I can't wait. I'm like pumped. I'm like, I want a roulette. I'm going to put my feet up. I'm going to take a bubble bath and, you know, eat out the lady and all this shit. I can't wait. It's so exciting just being, oh, look at the people. That guy's shooting dice, and he's Asian, and he's in a wheelchair. He's limping. He's got a camo hat. I'm pumped. I'm going to do sports book, the whole thing. Yeah, that sounds fucking great. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't want COVID. I'm trying not to get COVID, uh, you know, the whole thing. But have some fun out there, yeah. folks. Live it up. I think do feel like I'm losing a year a little bit. You don't feel like that? A little bit, but that attitude, <coughs> you got to get rid of that attitude because yes. we are living. You're, you're in the moment. You got to do the thing. And and also, I mean, we're extremely lucky. I'm sure there's some people fucking throwing their shoes at the at the phone or wherever you, however you listen to a podcast going, fuck you, you fucking assholes. <laughs> I haven't worked. I'm homeless. My parents are dead. I yeah, mean, yeah, there's definitely that. Uh, but also, oh, I forgot what I was going to say again. Throwing the shoes at the phone threw me off because it's a funny image. Damn it. God, I, am I getting old? I keep forgetting what I'm going to say. Well, our show is very frantic. There's a lot of topics and which ways and different things. Throwing the shoe at the phone. We're very lucky. God. Damn it. Fuck. It'll come back. It'll come back. I, people hate us. I mean, I, I, you're always worried because I don't want to be that guy. Who we're like, hey, go out there, live your life, you fucking idiots. This is great. I'm having a great time. And then someone emails me and goes, hey, I'm working at a grocery store, you piece of shit. My wife killed herself. My parents both died. We couldn't visit it. I had my nipple on the window at the old folks' home. I, you know, <laughs> fuck you. Uh, it's been hard. We're just making the best of it here. Yes, yes. You got to make the best. You got to live your life, folks. Like We all have that one friend. I, I think we uh, we know the same guy who... He barely leaves. I had a birthday party. He showed up. He saw all the people. He left. Oh, boy. Yeah, and I'm like, look, I get it. You're being safe, but, I mean, come on, fatty. You got to take a spin in life. We're all going to... Oh, I remember what I was going to say. I got it back. Yes. Yes. Take it quick. Go, go. We're, we're all so lucky, not just because we, we, we were comics and we're gay, but because this is a decent point in life to have COVID happen. Imagine you're a senior in high school, you're a senior in college, you're about to graduate, then, you know, you miss that big ceremony, you miss the big prom, or, you know, like you're, or you're 88, and this is your last year on earth, and you gotta spend it in a fucking wheelchair with a gas mask on. Completely agree. Our friend Jay Soute, he called us during the shutdown, during pandemic. I was like, hey, I'm gonna die in six weeks. That's a good and point. Like, Jesus Christ. I mean, you can't go see... Pearl Jam or go on a slip and slide. I mean, he's on his way out and everyone's shut down. He's going, hey, guys, I'm dying. Everyone goes, hey, I don't want to be with you, you son right. of a bitch. And that's the other thing. And I hate to say this because this is going to sound a little insensitivo, but whenever somebody dies of something else, you go, hey, you heard Jeff died or you know, Bob Bob for cum died? And they go, uh, COVID? And they go, nah, he had a brain tumor. You go, man, eh, what are you going to do? Right, right. If you, if you don't die of COVID, nobody gives a shit. And I, I, well, I was saying this the other day. I was talking to Derek about because we're we're fed up. You gotta just come on, come over. Like he said, he's like, even if you have COVID, I don't care. He's like, you can be coughing with COVID. I need to see you. I need family here. Just come over here. They here, keep here. saying Thanksgiving. Be careful. You're not gonna be able to see your parents. But 
I call my parents and go, hey, what do you think? I'm taking care. I wear a mask. I'm gay. Can I come? They go, we don't give a fuck. Just come over here. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to speak too out of, out of twister here, but uh, my cousin's getting married, and I'm going to the wedding down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and my parents are like, yeah, we're all going to go to the wedding, but we're not going to that reception. That's crazy. And I'm like, I'm going. I want to have a drink. I want a piece of cake. I want to see my cousin get railed on the table. Like, I'm going. And they're like, I don't know if you should go. I don't know if there's going to be mass. People are going to be dancing. There's a, there's a band. I'm like, I'm going. I'll well, get COVID. I'll get it. I'll get over it. Well, that's fair. See, that I like that. That's what we need. The parents are old. They're 85. You know, he's got whatever, long fingernails, whatever it is. Sure. So he's going, hey, I don't want to. I don't want I can't risk it. And you go, hey, I'm 37. I'll risk it. That's how it should be working, I think. Let's work it, baby. I'm well, it down. works speaking, if you work it. Speaking of long, I got a long ball and a limp dick, but not anymore. Thanks to old blue Chew, folks. Tuesdays of Stories brought to you by Blue Chew, the first chewable dick pill. While we're all stuck at home, what's something we could all use a little more of? Human contact, sure, but also sweet, sweet love making, baby. It's a stress reliever. Blue Chew, you'll be keeping your loved one at a healthy distance, six inches away. I wish. I love Blue Chew. I've used it a few times few too many times i think I, I got hooked on this stuff i mean it it's easy to chew i keep one in the pocket it tastes good and it works instantly some of these other ones you got to swallow them and wait three days and call your uncle and go to a, a zen master and a snake charmer not this works right away it gives you like an extra inch the lady's happy it's a it's like a 14 year old's wiener it's amazing last all night Big fan of the Blue Chew. Can't recommend it enough. FDA approved. Take Blue Chew anytime, day or night, full stomach, whatever. So you can be ready whenever the opportunity arises. Blue, Blue Chew is prescribed online by licensed physicians. So you don't even have to go to the doctor's office and wait in line at a pharmacy like a weird chump. Just get it. Tell them about what to do, JoJo. Right now, we've got a special deal for our listeners. You can visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free when you use our special promo code TUESDAYS. Just pay $5 for shipping. Again, that's B-L-U-E-CHEW.com, promo code TUESDAYS, and you can try it for free. How about that? BlueChew.com, finally a website that can give you an erection. Nice. All right. Love the blue chew. I also love Manscaped. If you're going to have a boner, you want that thing to be presentable. You don't want the bushes and the hedges all covering up the nice statue. We're also sponsored by Manscaped. Get Manscaped. They are the only men's brand dedicated exclusively to blow the belt grooming and hygiene. Precision tools for your family jewels. I love that. What is that thing called? The lawnmower. Oh, I got yeah. the lawnmower. I use that puppy all day long. That the battery on that thing lasts great. It's great for, you know, we've all used a razor or a machete, and it's like the nicks and the cuts, and you can't have nicks down there. They're a horrible basketball team. Stevie but you can't nicks. have a nick down there. It gets sweaty and the schmegma and all that get all stingy, and you don't want a lady seeing some kind of wound on your shaft there. That's not a good look. So Been there. you got to get these things. It's waterproof. It includes an LED light. you got oh. a light on there so you can see every mole, blemish, and, and queef. Big fan. It's made with advanced skin-safe technology. There's a lot of fancy copywriting, which just basically means it won't nick or snag your nut sack. Whew, God, these guys thought everything. When you order the performance package from Manscaped, you not only get the lawnmower, you also get the crop preserver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. It's getting hot out there, and this will keep your balls from sticking. So you also get the Crop Reviver, which will keep your balls smelling fresh, just like spring flowers. Plus, they'll throw in the newest product, the Weed Whacker Ear, Nose, and ha Nose Hair Trimmer, featuring a 9,000 RPM motor power, 360-degree rotary dual blade system. 
Woo! Well, good whacker and all on Manscaped has to offer the performance package. It's the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. I love it. I got bad Sicilian nose hairs and ears hairs, and I get those uh, zipped right out of there. I love these guys. Tell them how to do it, fat man. Good lord, that was a lot. When you order the performance package, you get 20% off and free shipping when you use the code Tuesdays at manscaped.com. That's manscaped.com, and use the promo code TUESDAYS, plural, just like your balls, hopefully, for 20% off your first order, and always use the right tools for the job. Hitler had one ball. Is that right? Oh, yeah. That's why he was so angry. He had to conquer the world. He only had one testy, and I think it, it fucked with his mind. Well, that's funny. That's a funny line. Hitler had a ball. Ah, yeah, that's good. I don't know. I like he, that. He must have had some good times out there. At one point, he was really kicking ass. Oh, he was the, the king of the castle. I mean, he was all methed up. He had his lady there. He had his haircut. He had the Charlie Chaplin. Who had the stash first? Chaplin was mocking him, or he had it because of Chaplin? I believe Hitler had it because of Chaplin. So Chaplin was the first to do the, the musty. Yeah, I think Chaplin was pre-Hitler. He was big. I mean, he was but, the biggest star on the planet at that time, and he was banging uh, 14-year-olds. And he wrote, directed, started, and then scored the film. He did everything. Yes! Man, what a talent. British Jew. Yeah, he was something else. Yeah, he was big, and that was back when you could bang a 4 I think he married a 14-year-old, and everybody's like, yeah, well, you're Charlie Chaplin. You do what you gotta do. Yeah, sure. It was great. I, I watched like his like Oscar speech. It was like a lifetime achievement. It was really I sweet. He's like, you're wonderful, wonderful people. And it was yeah. like, oh, wow, this guy's great. He was and in great. your mind, you're like, they're not so wonderful. It's Hollywood. They're probably all pedophiles. True, but I think it was a different game back then. It felt more arty. Like these guys are writing and performing and composing. Now it's just a bunch of hacks who, who make Transformers. I oh, hate Transformers. I told you, though, that woman, who's the woman? Megan Megan Fox. Yeah, I told you, I read an interview. She was like, I like nerdy types. I like unassuming, funny, nerdy types. And I was like, could I fuck Megan Fox? Is that in the cards? Maybe. I mean, she's your Marissa Tomei. It could be, right? Yeah. I got to go to L.A. and snoop around and just see, you know, just maybe flash her a smile, show her these, this pet cemetery I got going on and see how she responds. (laughs) You know, send her I hate myself and see what goes down. Oh. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't show her the smile just yet. Just save that for later. <laughs> but uh, plus, with that that tiny mouth, she's not going to see anything. From a di- well, we got a socially distance. That's kind of nice. Ah, uh-huh. the mask yes. is good too. Love the mask well, for you. But with the mask, I'm like a bald guy with hats. It's like I'm like Costanza. <laughs> I got to reveal it at some point. That's true. I mean, also the mask. It, it's funny how everything becomes sexual. Like. I see a half a, a, a lip over here. It's like seeing side boob. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. These are these are fun times. This is why I have hope not to go into COVID talk, but everything's shut down. All of a sudden, they got. Oh, I'm in Seattle. They got the, the 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 sidewalk spray painted, the six feet apart thing. We got the outdoor shows happening. Now they got the tents. They built the restaurants in the thing. We're adapting. It's all it's all gravy. Yeah, it's a bitch, but you got to adapt to survive. That's kind of how uh, how things go. And some people won't adapt, and you see them kind of fluffing off a little bit. Exactly. So we'll see. Who knows? By the way, I just want to throw out a thing. I, I don't believe in QAnon. I said the Hollywood's pedophiles. It was a joke. I feel like I didn't say it jokingly enough. But let's be honest. There was probably a couple pedophiles out there, including Oh, Chapel. yeah. No doubt about it. <clears throat> Come on. I think that's why you get into acting. But isn't it weird? We've probably talked about this before, and this is hairy territory. But pedophilia... I don't know if that's so hairy. I mean, it's, it's very bald. <laughs> but there's <laughs> like... I'm not condoning marrying and fucking a 15-year-old, but there is a difference between a 15-year-old and like a 6-year-old. I, I think pedophilia... Oh, I think a yeah. guy with a kid on, on his arm, you know, carrying a child and, 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 and fucking a child. Completely agree. I mean, some people will fuck a 2-year-old and then fucking a 16-year-old... That, I mean, that's like murder and uh, a punch in the shoulder. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's still assault, but it's a shoulder. Yeah. Well, yes, not a perfect analogy, but I see where you're going at. I like where your head's at. <laughs> all right, all right. You that's know, like, it's per- like murder and manslaughter. It's like if you were driving and then somebody ran in front of your car and you killed them, 
And you're like, you murdered them. And you're like, wow, they ran in front of my... Well, that's kind of putting the blame on the 15-year-old. That's no good Yeah, either. yeah. All right, I'm how about sure this? I'm not about these analogies. It's like stealing a million dollars versus stealing 20 bucks. That's good. All that's right. That's good. We're back. Yes. Let's say 100, though, just to, you know, again, the teenagers. You shouldn't be fucking teenagers. Let's call it 100 bucks. Good point. Good point. Anybody can steal a 20. Yeah, exactly. Stealing a million bucks and stealing a hundred bucks, both stealing, but come on. Yes, okay. We're, we're, we got it now. All right. Pedos. Just trying to be as politically correct, politically incorrect at the same time as we can be here. I mean, I've, I've said it a million times, but aren't you glad you're not attracted to, to little kids? Or teenagers. I look or at teenagers, teens. I'm like, what are you shitting me? This girl sucks. <laughs> I, mean, I want I someone that's like 48. Oh, I love that. Louis got that great bit. I wish he didn't, but I, I like a woman that looks like she's been hit a few times, you know, falling down some stairs and really just giving up quite a bit. Completely agree. Like I used to rail these uh, like old milfs on the road, and they were like, we'd finish, and they were like, all right, get out of here, like skedaddle, dickless. Uh, I gotta watch Matlock or whatever it was. I was like, all right, you you got it, Patty. No, I've said it before. I mean, you go to like a uh, college campus. I love campuses. I'm walking around college campuses. I'm like, I can't even. There's nothing sexual about these girls. They're all twiggy. They have no childbearing hips. They look happy. Yes. Yeah. They got a book bag on. No tits. They got braces and, a, and a, like a scooter. <laughs> Get out of here. They got a razor. Yeah. So we're 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 good. We're grateful. We're happy. We're we're not. We're cool. We're good guys. Yes. Yes. Uh, so I got to tell you this little little tale I'm about to weave here. So, oh. I get a call, and I boy, I fucked this one up, and this might be, what's the word, uh, confidential, risque, what do you call it when you're not supposed to say it? Uh, on the shy, uh, fuck, I don't know, S- uh, scary, I'm not well, I don't, sure. I don't think I'm supposed to talk about this. Oh, so it's um, taboo. Ta- oh, back to taboo. Good yeah, game. Yeah, no, maybe taboo is not it. This no, is, I don't think um, it's taboo. Oh, weird. That's crazy. Look at this. Oh, interesting. A do taboo. What's that? Uh, some girlfriend water bottle. Fuck, I don't know what it is. It's you, it's you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's um risky business. Uh, complacent. No, all the right moves. No, no, Top different gun. Tom Cruise. Uh, <laughs> Not supposed to say it. Uh, Days of Thunder. Out of touch. No. Uh, they say it in the courtroom. <laughs> oh, um, that's uh, out of order. I object. Sustained. Overruled. Cum stains. <laughs> I don't know. Rigged. All right. Well, it's it'll, um. It'll oh, come to confidential. Us. Maybe that's it. Secretive. It confidential? That's not bad. Confidential we'll go that. means that. Okay, so this might be confidential, but uh, basically... Oh, Shelby's just texting. Maybe he's got the answer. What do you got, Shelbo? Court adjourned. <laughs> he was just adding adjourned? to the court thing. Court adjourned means it's over. Yeah. Uh, I think he's saying move on. That was clever, Shelbo. All right. I think he's just got the wrong answer. <laughs> okay, well, maybe I'm, I'm giving him more juice than he's worth. But, so I do this gig, and it's a pretty hefty gig. So this is a rich guy's birthday. He's like a pharmacy, big pharma guy, you know, oh drug dealer, basically. Millionaire guy. His, his dippy wife is like, oh, I'm going to throw you a big birthday party. And I'm going to get some comedians to make you laugh and roast you. And I'll pay him a bunch of money. And I was like, oh, great. I just said yes to the gig. I got the email. I said yes. Then my agent calls me and goes, what the hell are you doing? And I was like, what, what, what? He's like, you got to tell us about these gigs. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, why would I tell you? Then I have to give you commission. But I wasn't trying to be nefarious or whatever you call it. I was just trying to... Say yes to it. I got a gig. I said yes. I don't know. I didn't think about it. Okay, okay. What do you You're, do there? I, I'm like a goody two-shoe. I'm a rule guy. I call my agent on every single... I tell him about spots I'm doing. Ah, maybe I should have done it. But The good agents, 
they appreciate it and they go, I'm not commissioning you on that. You got it. You're, I mean, if it's 25000 or something. But I also no. do a thing when someone reaches out a gig, I go, you got to talk to my agent and I put it on them. My agent gets pissed. That way I can just, you know, whatever. You're not worried about the 10%. That's 10% is worth it to me because I don't have to deal with a bunch of messages. Sure. No, I, I should have done that. But I just said, oh, I saw the, the, the number. I said, I'm in. I just wrote back, yeah, I'm in. That's it. I didn't even think about it. But whatever. Yeah, that's fair. So the agent calls and goes, what the hell are you doing? And I'm, I'm like, oh, I just said, yeah, I don't know. And he's like, you got to loop me in on this shit. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, so you just want the money. They, they contacted me. And he's like, no, no, no. They were talking to me. I told them what you're worth. And then they went directly to you to save some money. I was like, ah. ah. So I could have gotten more. Right. Boy. But. I already said yes. So he's like, just don't don't let it happen again. I was like, I fucked up. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm an idiot. And whatever. So here's the gig. They had they mapped out the whole itinerary. Show up at the pier. It's this beautiful restaurant right on the pier in Tribeca. Beautiful. I can't imagine what this place costs to rent out. It's all glass. It's a fucking carousel. And it's right on the water. And uh, drinks. Then Chris DiStefano does 40. Then wow. dinner, then dessert, more drinks, then I do 40, and then that's a wrap. Okay. So, crazy night. I show up. Chris goes on at 7, and I was like, well, I don't have to be there. I don't go on until 9.30. So I was like, I'm getting there at 9 or whatever. I show up a little early. Chris is just getting off. He's covered in sweat. He's, 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 he's like... He looks great. You know, he's a handsome guy, but he's like, oh, he's all jacked up because he just went on for 40 minutes. And, you know, these aren't regular gigs. You can't just do your act. You got to shuck and jive. Sure. So he's telling me like, oh, man, I'm so glad that I did that. That was great money, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm jealous that you're done. And so they go, here you go. And I brought the lady. We go upstairs. They put us in a coat room, but they gave us all the food we wanted. They gave us all the drinks we wanted. So we're just boozing and eating steak and crab and lobster and all this shit. I'm in a suit. And we can hear the people downstairs partying and dancing and woo, 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 woo. And I was like, oh, man, this is going to be wild. So now it's been like an hour, two hours. I've been putting beers back. You know, she's drinking red wine. I've had 13 king crabs. And we're just in this broom closet eating and talking. And then finally they come get us. They bring us downstairs. And the wife goes, ding, 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 ding. Everybody in the showroom. They bring everybody in the showroom. They're legless. I mean, <laughs> these people are, you know, millionaires. They're all in fur coats and tuxedos and the whole thing balloons everywhere and the spread they got a raw bar they got chocolate and all this fancy dessert big red velvet cake the whole thing and they go okay go on so i just go up there and the wife is like hot and old and fucking drunk and she's like we got a guy he was recommended highly the other guy we booked canceled so we got this guy <laughs> mark norman and i go up and i'm like oh hey and it was tough I am eating a bag of cheese up there. <laughs> Woo, 40 minutes. And I'm, I told the lady, I was like, light me at 30 just so I know where I am. I'm dying. I'm bombing. I'm riffing. It's one of those shows where you do your best stuff. It gets like titters. And then you go, she loves anal. Woo! Right. So you know, what that are we talking about? Are there 25 people there or 300 people there? Give me, give me an idea. I'd say 16. Oh, 16. Ah, this is private event. This is this is closed off. I was thinking 40, 50, 16. That's I tough. wish. I wish. And it was this guy's 55th birthday. So you knew that like this this wife, she set the whole thing up and she kept doing the What is it with older women where they see you and then they see your girl and they go like, "You're so lucky to have her. She's way out of your league. You're a piece of garbage. She's beautiful." You're like, "Yes, I know. I know. I'm an idiot." You know, yeah, I get but, it all the time. I'm like, she's quite flawed, actually. Uh, <laughs> I know, I know. There's some not serious mention, problems. Not to mention, she's all over me, touched me. I, and even May later was like, if you were a guy, oh, geez, if you were a girl and she was a guy, this would be a lawsuit. Yeah, there's a lot of that going around. A lot of that, but, you know, what, what are you going to do? I don't care. I'm just saying, like, if the roles were reversed. But so she brings me up i eat my asshole for 20 minutes i, I kind of get them then i lose them then i get them then i lose them and then i bombed at the end and i'm waiting for the light i'm like 
I must have been on stage an hour and a half. Nothing. And then the lady goes, all right, wrap it up. Wrap it up. Like from the back. And I was like, done. I get off to titters like, oh, that was rough. And I go to the to the the girlfriend. I go, what the hell? How much she was like? You did twenty nine. It's like, jeez. Oh I felt like I was riffing. I did all my act. I did my old act. I was talking to people in the front row. Twenty nine minutes. I haven't done a gig like that. I had that feeling in a long time. But forty minutes for sixteen people, even if they're hot. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, oh. sixteen is not. You don't want to do forty for sixteen people in any circumstance, even if they were all. If it was deaf comedy jam. Completely, yeah, and, and it was so weird because it felt like the old days. Like you're in the broom closet, you're wearing a suit, you're uncomfortable. You know that feeling of like, okay, the money's great, uh, it's cool to be here. I'm eating good food. I've got a great glass of beer here, but I don't know what I'm in for. I don't know if these people are going to be nice. I don't know if the, there's a good setup. I don't know if there's a microphone. I don't know if there's a stage. I don't know if there's ten people. There's a hundred people. I had no idea. You just got to go with it. It reminds me of a gig I did when I first. Moved to New York. I got it from Paul Nardizzi, great Boston comic. And he used to get these great gigs. He used Killer. that website Gigmaster. I don't know if you ever Ooh, used that. I've heard of it. He was like the top rated Gigmaster comedian. This is wow. for people that don't have agents. They just do this sort of the VFW, the KFC, the, the you know, HPV. Knights of Columbus, not KFC. KFC, uh. not KFC. But anyways, he did all these gigs and he got this gig. I had just moved to New York. And it was a bachelor party at Columbus Circle in the steakhouse that's there. I don't know if it was there anymore. Same thing, private gig, like 20 guys. And I'm, I, I'm so stupid at the time. And I know it's like, oh, that was really nice of you. But they paid 1000 bucks. I got Mike Vecchione to open. And I gave him 300 which mm. was silly because I had no – I was completely broke. I had no job, no nothing. I had just moved to New York City. I should have given him – 75, right. which is spot pay. It's a spot. Yeah. But in my mind, I mean, now, it's funny because I've come back around to now I would do that. That's the money I would pay now. But now you have a little cheddar. Right. I'd be like, let me throw a bone to whoever. Right. Now, I'd probably do eight and two, to be honest now, if I'm being perfectly honest. But anywho. Well, that's fair. Because what I do you do, 10 minutes, 15? He did 10 and I did 20. They only wanted 30 minutes. So they had some serious some serious cheese, money, cake, yeah, oh yeah. dough. So bananas. So I went there. Clams. Vecchione. I had Vecchione open again. And what I was trying to do was I wanted to get in with the, the good guys, the cool guys. I could have ah. used some Joe Schmo, but I was like, let me get the top guy who I want to be friends with. He was I a seller a guy. Yeah, exactly. So I get Vecchione. He goes up. And just rips it. And it's similar, as much as you can rip it for 30 guys at a steakhouse, all dudes, and kills, does his A. He's just killing, killing. Yeah. And then the only reason I got him was to bring me up. You want someone to introduce you. Ah. So I'm like, just bring me up. So he says, that's it for me. And the guy, the father of the husband, what do you call it? What's the opposite groom. of the bride? Groom. The father of the groom comes running up, takes the mic from Mike, and now I'm losing my intro. That's all I wanted. It was a $300 intro. Uh, I didn't even get the intro. What happened? What did you say? So he says, similar to your thing, he goes, that guy, that's not even the guy we hired. Oh. That's just some asshole. Oh. And if that's not the guy we hired, imagine how good the guy we're paying is. Right. So he built it that way. He built it as like, that guy is just some dick that came along for the ride. So he's like, can you imagine what the headliner is going to be? I mean, buckle up, folks. Oh. Here comes the granddaddy of them all. And he gave me that kind of intro. Meanwhile, sure. Vecchione had just murdered. He was a better comic than me at the time. So uh -huh. I went up and just, uh, it was it was shit. Really? Bomb? I don't want to say bomb, but it was it was bad. Like It was one of those ones where afterwards Vecchione was like, no, no, you did well. And I'm like, uh. but I was in the room for both sets. Yeah. <laughs> if the headliner does not as well as the opener, that's a bomb. Yes, yes, even good if he point. does, Even if he does well, the headliner has to do better than the opener. Right, right. Well, it, it's interesting because Chris D., who I, I love, is there, and he left. So it was that weird thing where, like, one of the only cool parts about comedy, not one of the only cool, but one of the cool parts is you're with your buddy, you're in the trenches, you're, you're both miserable, you're both, you know, trying to figure it out, and you get to, I could have watched his set, but I got there too late, and then he saw me, we hung out for a half hour, then he left. So I talked to a waiter 
This is where this is where it gets weird with comedy, where you're like, I need some information. Like, I went to a waiter. I was like, How was the first guy? What did he do? Because I don't want to step on his toes. And he was like, He made fun of the guy basically the whole time, and it got weird. He killed, but it got Ooh. weird at some point. So I was like, Okay, I'm not doing that. But it's it's not fun when you don't have the guy with you. Right, right. Oh, definitely. And also, it sucks that they're not. You're not back to back. He warms right. you up. He brings you up. It would have been great. Exactly. There's a momentum, but huh, excuse me, the ice. But yeah, yeah. It was it was tough. It was a weird gig, but the money was great. The check cleared. The food was amazing, and it's a story. And uh, I don't know. It was cool for the the lady to to see what the hell, where the hell this money comes from, because she was like, "That was crazy." I'm like, "I know. This is this is it, sister. This is showbiz." Yeah, it's weird when you get to that point where you get those gigs that pay so much money, but they're so unpleasant. I know, I know. And, and you know what else I noticed? And this, this sounds kind of uh, demeaning, but it was very fascinating to me that this lady, this mom or, or wife of the rich guy, she was put together, cool, you know, nice looking lady, but it was so kind of pandery, like, okay, ding, 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 now we go for dinner. Okay, now we all come in here and eat dessert, and then we watch a show, and then we'll have drinks, then we'll watch another show, and you're like, what are you, nine? It felt like we all had to like hold her hand. Okay, yeah, this is what you say. She had to design this whole party, so she had some validity in life, I guess, you know, because probably this guy makes a million zillion dollars, and she's like, I do the fun stuff. I plan things, you know, and you could totally feel that. You know, these are 50, 60-year-old people who are like, okay, Claire says we go in here now, and it it felt like, can't we just hang out? I hate those people. She's Garfunkel to his Simon. You know, it's a talent. It's great. Sure. It's nice. But if she went solo, <laughs> it would be a real stinkeroo. Yeah, and it was one of those things where she's that housewife being like, Oh God! I put up with him. I do look. Look at this magical party I gave him. You want to be like, hey, lady, this guy would prefer to be at home now watching a hockey game in his pajamas. He right. doesn't want to be here. He's doing this for you. And he can hire a lady to do that. Right. An right, event yeah. planner. I think that's a job that people have. I believe it is an EP. Yeah, I don't like that shit. I don't like the thing of like, well, first we're doing this, then we're doing that, and then we're doing this. I, I revolt against it in general. I'm like, ah, I'm going to do something different. I, I don't want to do that. Yeah, well, I want to have a beer over here and eat chocolates, but it's not chocolate time. It's dinner time. I want a piece of chocolate, gang. <laughs> That's why it's better to just set it up and say, over here we have fried chickens. That's the chocolate section. There's roller skating over there if you want to roller skate. We got a movie going over here. This is the disco floor. That's the, you know, anal bleaching is happening in there. And this is the orgy room. Sure. You don't take every the whole group from one room to the other. You say, there you go. It's all out there. It's all out there. Yeah, but she had to plan and it had to be clockwork or, or else she was going to have a conniption. Or a shit fit, whatever you want to call it. So it just it just felt very kid like, you know. I remember when I was a kid, my parents would have these dinner parties and get shit housed, and uh, I would come in and go, "I'm doing a play," and they would all have to go, "Oh, geez, the fucking spastic kid with the wet underwear has to tell us a monologue about The Simpsons," and uh, you could tell they hated it. But I was like, "They love me. I'm a star," you know. That's right. what that's what she felt like. Yeah, I never was able to do that, and there's. You know, yeah, I've seen that with it's like the kid's going to sing now or whatever. And you just go, ah, I'm good. I, don't, I mean, it's it's so Larry David, but it is a thing of like, I, I'm going to be playing horseshoes. Let me know. If, I'm sure it's yeah, great. Just, I know. I send know. me a DVD. Send me a YouTube of the, the thing. <laughs> Give it, I'm yes. sure the kid's a great tap dancer. YouTube it. Send me the link. I'll leave a nice comment and a thumbs up. I can't sit here and watch a child tap dance on my uh. birthday. I know. Even now, looking back as a as a thirty seven year old, chew coos, I still feel bad that I did that. Now you're a bad person, and you should email some adults. I they're know. probably on their deathbed by this point, and just say, "Hey, I'm really sorry," because they're probably thinking about it. They probably got one of those bags on the the wheels they breathe off of one oh, of those yeah. an IV Colossal and just go, me. "Yeah, nineteen eighty seven. You had to watch a kid, you know." Pretend he was a rabbit or whatever the fuck it was. And sorry about that. <laughs> also, another sad thing. This this could be an incorrect assumption, but I think all this was paid for with his money. I assume. And 
we had one of those chatty waiters, you know, when the waiter comes up, he's like, oh, it's good to be up here with the comedian, I'll tell you, you know, nobody thinks I'm funny in the kitchen, blah, 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 and you're like, oh, yeah, got it, whatever, and then he's like, uh, boy, this raw bar, this was 90000 and it's like caviar, he's like, this tin of caviar is ten grand. i am like, what? He's like, no one's touched it, they got these party favors, each one has a bottle of wine, a bottle of champagne, a bottle of this, whatever, in there, and nobody's taking them home, it's insane, they, the money they spent, but it's a 55-year-old birthday. It's not even like a milestone. Right. Yeah, we always talk about it. It's just a speed limit. Uh, we all, It's not even a speed limit anymore. It's the old speed limit. Now it's 65. 65, yeah. Some places it's 70, 75. Uh, you know, when you're out west, southwest, 75. That's what it should be when you when you factor in the technology of a car. Yeah, I guess so. I mean... It feels safe enough. I mean, I do 75. It feels about right. I mean, that's what people are doing anyways. Yeah, exactly. I mean, in the old days, you do 75, your car's on fire, it's rattling, you know, the the, the headboard is flopping in your face. But now a car is just uh, centric and move, baby. Oh, yeah. Well, mine can. It's in the shop still, but uh, I'm picking it up today. Oh, If finally. they're listening today, if you're to you, it's four days from now. Back, We're back to where we started. Oh. <laughs> um, yes. Well, we got to wrap Taboo. this thing up here, but uh, I got some gigs. This Thursday, I'm in Middlefield, Connecticut at Lyman Orchards. Still an outdoor gig. I guess they got heaters or whatever. And next week, I got two shows out in Pennsylvania. Wednesday, I think it's the 11th. The 11th, I'm in Royersford, back in Royersford. Get those tickets. Please go to Soul Joel. You've been there. Most of the people have been there, so they must know how to get the tickets. And Best then Friday... I'm in Millersville, Connecticut. Uh, give that one a Google. I'll throw up a link or whatever. Give it a Google. Because uh, I don't have the website right in front of me because I'm a bad businessman. But Millersville, Connecticut, you can message me for the details. I'll send it to you. And um, Oh, and November 28th, I'm at, in Foxborough Stadium, that gig, that uh, Gillette Comedy. What the fuck's that one called? I don't have the link for that one either, but I'll share it. It's called, uh, it's in that, Foxborough, Massachusetts. That sounds amazing. Is that, it's in a stadium? It's not in the stadium. There's uh, a, it's Patriot's Place. It's, it's Patriot's Place. It's a little restaurant at the stadium. And uh, I don't know. That's a gig. That's an indoor gig. November 28th. Two shows. Five and seven, seven and nine. I'm so bad at this, but, but check hey, it out. Lit. And uh, Best of can get. I got a web series I'm shooting today with uh, old Dan Hershon. I'm putting that together, so go check out the YouTube. Subscribe. I've been throwing up some videos, some stupid fun shit. There's a lot of funny shit on there, so go check that out. And most of you aren't subscribed because I got 70,000 listeners here. I got 60,000 Instagram and 60,000 Twitter and fucking 3,000 on YouTube. So go to the YouTube right now and subscribe and uh, fuck your mother in the ass and eat your dad's pussy. <laughs> there you go. Hey, hey, this weekend... Hilarities in Cleveland. Come on out to Cleve. Let's uh, do it up. We'll go to some Slimans and some Mama Roses. Mama Santas. Santas. God. I had the wrong Columbus ship. Then I'm at Greenville Comedy Zone in Greenville, one of the Carolinas. That should be interesting. People people come out to that one, apparently. I, I had to move it for some COVID reasons, but we're doing it. Then I'm at Phantom Power in Millersville, PA. That's where That's you're it. at. That's nuts after Thanksgiving. On thanks uh, in New Orleans, if you're in, a, in the big NOLA, the big easy, I'll be at a uh, hell of a secret show on the 24th. I only call it a secret show because I can't think of where it is. But uh, tickets are moving. So give that a goog. New Orleans, Norman, the 24th of November. Then Spokane maybe will open by then. I don't know. They, they closed down its doors, but it might be open by then. Helium in Buffalo, who knows? But uh, side splitters for New Year's. So, yeah, a lot of fun stuff coming up. I'm all over Jersey City and all that shit. So uh, check the stories, check the twits, check the day of the gram, and check your head and your privilege. And uh, we'll see you next time. And uh, stay safe out there and in the big sea uh, tack. Yeah, be, <coughs> be careful. George is saying cut it. Great up. Cut it. Praise Thank Allah. You. Patreon. Fuck. <laughs>